Welcome to Mode Bespoke, I'm Atenas. For today's tutorial, we're gonna be working on the rest of the raglan for the raglan yoke that we started in our previous tutorial. So let's get started. So here's the yoke that we crocheted in our last tutorial. Now, if you don't have a yoke like this one, I will leave a link down in the description box. So complete the yoke and then come back to this tutorial to complete the rest of your raglan. So I will be using the same hook, the same yarn, everything that we used in our previous tutorial. So that won't change. Now, if we take a look at the yoke, this is going to be a front opening raglan. So if I fold this over like this, here we can see the front of what's gonna be our cardigan. So it's gonna have the buttons down in the center. And what we're gonna work on now is gonna be adding length to the sides of our uh, cardigan. And then at the end, we will work on the sleeves. So the first thing to note is where the corners of the raglan are. So this is going to be just under the arm. So we're just going to work on this base section for the time being. So note where these corner corners are. We're going to be moving our stitch markers to make it a little bit easier to see where the sleeve begins and where the sleeve ends and where we're going to be stopping our stitching. So let's take a look here at our corner stitches. So whenever I refer to any of the corner stitches, it's going to be these seams along what's going to be the collar down to just below your arm on the cardigan. This side right here is going to be the sleeve and then we have another corner so this is our second corner or it's going to be the second stitch marker and then this is going to lead to the back of the cardigan. So we are going to be moving these stitch markers so that the corners match and that way our seams are the same side and we'll have the same stitch counts for the front of the cardigan, the back of the cardigan and also the sleeves. So we're going to move the very first stitch marker and I'm just removing it from its current stitch and I'm going to place it on the very last stitch along that same row um, on the seam of the cardigan. So I just moved it over. We're going to go over to our second stitch marker. This one I'm going to move over one stitch to the right or one stitch towards the inside of the sleeve just so that I can make my sleeves match. So we're going to move it over one stitch towards the inside of the sleeve, or in my case, to the right, and place it along the top stitch. And there we go. So we're gonna begin this first row. It's just a knit stitch, so you're going to skip the very first vertical stitch. You're gonna knit stitch into the second vertical stitch and into every stitch until you reach that very first stitch marker. So I've got two vertical stitches left, so I'll crochet these two, so let's cast these on. So I got knit stitch, knit stitch, and then we get to our stitch marker. We're gonna knit stitch into that same stitch. So knit stitch here, and then we are going to skip the sleeve. So this entire section here along the side is the sleeve. You're gonna fold it over, and you're gonna knit stitch in the same stitch as that second stitch marker. So we'll come back to the sleeve in a while, but for now, we're gonna skip all of that and go to our second stitch marker, and we're gonna knit stitch. So I'm going to pull these apart a little bit just to exaggerate the spacing, but this is what it's going to look like. So just pull on your yarn and that'll tighten up the space between the two stitches. And now you're just going to knit stitch into every vertical stitch along the back side of the cardigan until you reach the next stitch marker. So I'll crochet a few more just to tighten the stitch a little bit. And I'll show you what that space between the two um, stitch markers will look like because you are going to have a little bit of space between them. So for those of you that are a little more advanced, just continue to knit stitch until you get to this next stitch marker. Now let's move this stitch marker over together. So we're going to move it all the way along the same row to the topmost stitch. So move it all the way up. And there we go. Now let's go to the fourth and final stitch marker. And this one, we're going to move it over one stitch towards the inside of the sleeve. So one stitch to the right and place it at the top stitch right up here. So going back to our stitching, the space that you're gonna have between your two stitch markers is about the width of your finger. If you have a bigger space, just pull your stitches out and pull on your yarn just to tighten up the space. So continue working your knit stitch and then work your second sleeve just the way I showed you here for the first sleeve and I'll see you when we get to the end of the row. So once you reach the end of the row, you're going to complete a return pass, and this is a regular return pass. So you're going to yarn over, we're going to pull through one, and for all the rest of the loops on our hook, so this is what it looks like so far, 
For the rest of all of those loops, you're going to yarn over and pull through two. So you repeat this until you are left with just one loop on your hook. Once you complete your return pass, your work should look a little like this. So now you have clearly defined sleeves and then the front of the cardigan and the back. And there you go. Now the rest of the length is going to be quite simple. All you do is crochet and knit stitch in every stitch of the row beginning on the second vertical stitch from your hook. Now on the blog I have a measurement chart and this is just average sizing for different size cardigans from newborn to adult. Go find whatever size cardigan you're crocheting and jot down the length that you're going to need to crochet. You are still going to crochet uh, the trim at the very bottom of the cardigan so it's going to be a, a little bit like an elastic band. We still have to add that at the end. So whatever measurement the length is for your cardigan, say for this one, it was, I think it was like eight inches or something. I'm going to crochet seven inches and do a one inch trim at the bottom. You can make it however wide you want, but normally what I do is I'll crochet a trim that's about an inch wide for baby sizes, one and a half for children, and two for adult size cardigans. So that's how much I'm going to subtract from the length of my cardigan. So let's begin this next row. So this is row number two. We're going to skip the first vertical stitch. We're going to knit stitch into the second stitch. And then you're just going to knit stitch into every one of the uh, vertical stitches for this row. Once you get to the end of the row, you're ready for your return pass. It's going to be a regular return pass. Just yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two until you complete your row. So I'll complete these last few stitches and get to that stitch marker right here just to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to knit stitch in these remaining two vertical stitches. We are going to skip this middle section and then I'm going to knit stitch into the remaining stitches of the row. So we're going to knit stitch here, knit stitch here. We're going to skip this section. We're going to go into this next vertical stitch right over here and we're going to knit stitch and that's it. So you continue to knit stitch this way until you complete the row. So to complete the rest of the length for your cardigan, you're just going to continue to repeat row two. Now if you need that sizing chart, again it is on the blog. I'm going to leave a link down in the description box below. So subtract however wide trim you want. So whether it is one, one and a half to two inches, just subtract that from the total length of your cardigan. So let's move on to the trim. Now let me pick up my stitch again. We are going to begin with a chain and this chain is going to vary in stitch numbers. It's all measurement based so make as many chains as you need to complete the width that you want for your trim. So like I said earlier I'm going to work a one inch trim into this little cardigan. So I'm just going to crochet it's about seven to eight um, stitches at least with this yarn size and this hook size. It might be different depending on what yarn and hook you use. So use a measurement and just make a length of chain and measure it out. So while you are crocheting your chains make sure that you count them because you are going to need that stitch count further along as you crochet the the width of your trim just to make sure that you haven't skipped any stitches. So once you get further along, just count every, I don't know, however many rows you want, every few inches or so. Just make sure you keep that stitch count. That way you'll know if your uh, trim has gotten wider or narrower and you'll be able to fix that right away. So the first thing we need to do is a foundation row. So for this, we're going to skip the first stitch of the chain and we're going to work into the second one. We've already got the first stitch of the chain on the hook. So we're going to insert our hook into the second stitch, yarn over and cast on one. We're going to repeat this in every stitch of the chain. We've got one more here, one bit, maybe two. There we go. And then we have to join our foundation row to the cardigan. So to do this, we're going to knit stitch in that second vertical stitch of the row. So we're working on the first vertical stitch, which is what we've cast on onto our hook. And we're gonna cast on into the second stitch and we're just gonna knit stitch right in here. So insert your hook between the two legs that make up the stitch yarn over and cast on one. Before moving on to the return pass, I'm going to count the number of loops I have on my hook right now. This is going to be the stitch count that I'm going to maintain throughout the rest of my project. So I currently have eight loops on my hook. This means that any time I cast on, I should have a total of eight loops on my hook. So the return pass. The return pass for the trim is different. Normally we do yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two until you're left with one loop on your hook. 
For this one, we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. So I pulled up one, two, and now the rest of this is just yarn over, pull through two until you are left with one loop on your hook. And this is the same return pass for the rest of the trim. Here's the way your foundation row should look, right now at least. Now we're going to work the rest of the trim into the chain spaces between the vertical stitches. So right in this space. So if we take a closer look, it's this space between the vertical stitches. So for our first row, we're going to skip the first chain space. We're going to work into the second chain space. So this is the first and second vertical stitches. We're going to work between the second and third. You're going to insert your hook from the back of the fabric. So go behind your stitch and then push that through that chain space. We're going to yarn over and for this, I'm going to twist the hook. So I'm going to twist it as I pull it through. So I'm twisting what front to back just to make sure that I keep the yarn on my hook like this. We're going to repeat this in every one of the chain spaces between the vertical stitches. So we're going to go into the next one. Also inserting our hook from behind the stitch. We're going to go through towards the front and we're going to yarn over. We're going to twist the hook as we pull up a loop. And there you go. So this technique is one that I was sent. Uh, there was a video tutorial that somebody sent me in a comment and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It makes a very stretchy fabric. I will link the original tutorial down in the description box. All right, once you get to the end, the last two vertical stitches are going to look like this. You're going to insert your hook between those two, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Here at the cardigan, we're going to knit stitch into the next available vertical stitch. So this is going to be the third vertical stitch of the row. So here's what it looks like. Pick the, the next vertical stitch in the sequence. So these are the only stitches that you are going to work a knit stitch on. The rest of the stitches you're going to work between or in the chain space. So we're going to knit stitch onto the cardigan and pull up a loop. All right, so I'm going to count my stitches and we have eight. So we're good to go. All right, so we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull through two. And then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two until we have just one loop on our hook. And there we go. All right, so row number two. We're going to do something similar to row number one, but this time we're crocheting from the front of the stitch towards the back. And we are going to crochet into the first chain space. So between the first and second vertical stitch. So we're going to insert our hook into this chain space right here. So insert from the front of the fabric towards the back yarn over and pull up a loop. And we're going to repeat in the next one. Yarn over and pull up a loop. So now I have three loops on my hook and we're going to repeat here and we have four loops on the hook. I'm going to go into the next stitch. So in the chain space, so we have what four. Okay, so we're at five, six, and we've got seven. And we are going to skip this chain space, so right here between the last vertical stitch and the cardigan. And we're just going to knit stitch into the cardigan. This way we have eight loops. So we're going to two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. That way we have eight loops on our hook. Then we just complete a return pass. So yarn over, pull through two until you have one loop on your hook. So we're going to do another repetition of row one and two because this is a two row repeat. So if you need to watch it again, Here's how we're going to work this. If you don't, just skip ahead a little bit. So for the row one repeat, we are going to skip the first chain space. So between the vertical, the first and second vertical stitch, skip this stitch right here. Go into the second one. You're going to insert your hook from behind the stitching. So from behind the fabric, yarn over and cast on one. So we're going to repeat this here in the next few stitches. And you're also going to cast on using the space, so the chain space between the last vertical stitch and the knit stitch. And then you're going to um, knit stitch one. Make sure you have eight loops on your hook before completing your return pass. 
Now for the repetition for row number two, we are going to work into the chain space between the first and second vertical stitch. So right in here, we're going to insert our hook from the front of the fabric towards the back. Like this, we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and you're going to repeat this until you reach that last vertical stitch. For this row, you are going to skip the chain space between the last vertical stitch and your knit stitch. So skip that one and work into the knit stitch. So knit stitch one, you should have eight loops, and now you just yarn over, pull through two until you're left with one loop on your hook. Repeat this until you have completed the rest of the trim. Now, here is another little cardigan I'm working on. So this is the same, it's just a different yarn. And I just wanna show you how stretchy this is. So when you pull on it, it stretches quite a bit, it's reversible, and you pull on it and it stretches like this. And then it bounces back to where it was originally. So it's a really great technique. So thank you so much to the person that sent me that tutorial. It has been amazing and I love it. Like I said before, I will link the original tutorial for this technique down in the description box. I think it is in Polish. So you're just going to have to watch what she's doing, unless you speak Polish, of course, but I don't. So I just had to watch and learn the technique, but it's incredibly useful. So yeah, now we're using it on this cardigan. Anyway, I'm going to continue working the trim until I have completed the entire length of, or I guess the entire width is what I should say. So the entire width of the cardigan. So we're right here. I'm just going to work all the way to this end and I will see you at this end. So I've completed the trim at the bottom of the cardigan and now we're going to go up to the collar. So for this collar, we're going to work the same stitching, I guess, as we worked in the trim, only narrower. So to get to the neckline, we're going to work a small bind off row, followed by just the rest of these stitches in single crochet. And then we're going to work our way around the collar and do the buttonholes on the other side of the front flap. So the only thing we're going to have to pay a lot of attention to is going to be the decrease here along the corners. So right in these three corner stitches, so there's a corner here, one here, and then the other two are along the neckline, we're going to work decreases into those. Finally, the buttonholes are going to go on this side of the sweater. Now, if you decide that you want to add um, a zipper or anything else, you don't have to do all three rows because it's going to be a three row buttonhole. Otherwise, you can just do one row of single crochet and you'll be done. So let's move on to the bind off. Now, the bind off is going to be a simple one. It is single crochet and we're only going to crochet that for the trim. So to begin with the bind off, we're going to work a knit stitch beginning on the second vertical stitch of the row. So skip the first stitch and work into the second one. So insert your hook into the stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. So just a knit stitch. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops. So both of these to single crochet. And there you go. So we repeat this in the next stitch. So we're going to knit stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. We got two loops on our hook and then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. So this is a single crochet bind off. So we'll repeat it in the remaining stitches of the trim. And once we get to the edge right over here, so once we have this knit stitch, we're going to begin to work a, a row of single crochets. Now you're going to work the single crochets into these side stitches right here. So we're going to insert our hook into the stitch. So here is right there the very next stitch right after our last single crochet bind off. And you're going to work into every single one of the stitches along the edge of the front panel. So I'll continue working the rest of the single crochets and I'll see you again in just a moment. So I've got two stitches left before I reach the neckline. So I'll crochet these two single crochets. So here's the cornermost stitch and we are done. So now I'm going to crochet a chain in the width that I want the collar to be. So, so it's going to be the same process as the trim. So it's the exact same foundation row, two row repeat. I'm just going to work a smaller chain. So instead of working, what was it, eight stitches, I'm going to do like five just because I want the neckline to be a little narrower. Like I said, it's the same process that we worked for the trim. So you're going to cast on a foundation row and then you are going to knit stitch into the cardigan. But the knit stitch might look a little bit different. So 
instead of it being a very obvious vertical stitch, you're going to guide yourself using the knit stitch. So follow the knit all the way up to the top and then you'll see the two little legs or the two little loops that make up the stitch. That's where you're going to insert your hook. So right between these two. So I'm going to grab my hook. I'm going to go into that first little knit stitch of the row. So here's that first knit stitch. I'm going to insert my hook and then I'm going to knit stitch. And then you just work a return pass and it is the trim return pass which is yarn over pull through two and then yarn over pull through two. Remember to count your loops just so you make sure that you have the same stitch count throughout the entire neckline. So then you're just going to work your two row repeat. So you use the back chain space stitch and then the front chain space stitch until you get to the corner stitches. At the corner stitches you are going to have to decrease. So the decreases for here are quite simple. It's just a uh, you're going to knit into the three stitches and then yarn over pull through all of those loops. So I'm going to cast on these stitches so they're on the hook and then we'll work a decrease into the corner stitch. Now the corner is made up of three stitches. So it's got the one in the center, so right along here, and then it's got the two on the side. So here's the center stitch. It's got one stitch over here on the right side and then one on the left side. Those are the three stitches you need for the decrease. So you're going to knit stitch into the first stitch. So the first of the three, just yarn over, pull up a loop, and you're going to knit stitch in the next two stitches. So here's the corner stitch. You're going to knit stitch into that one. And then knit stitch into the last stitch. Now once you have all three loops on your hook, it's going to look a little bit like this and it will be just a little bit separated. Not as much as these, but you're going to have a clear division between your stitching. You are going to then do a different return pass and it's only for the decrease. You are going to yarn over and pull through the three loops that make up that corner stitching. So these three loops plus one more. So you're going to yarn over and pull through four loops. And then you're going to complete the return pass with the yarn over pull through two. So we're going to do yarn over and pull through four loops. And that's the decrease right there. So what that decrease will do is it's going to round out these little corners of the neckline. So it'll be nice and round and they won't stand out as much. So complete the rest of the return pass. Just yarn over, pull through two until you have one loop left on your hook and that's it. And just continue with the one and two row repeat. All of the corners are worked the same way. So it's all three stitches and then the decreases. Once you've completed the collar, it should look a little like this. So here, I'll pull it up so you can see it. So the corners have all been rounded out and it should look like this. Now we're going to work on the buttonholes. Now again, if you're not doing buttons and you just want to want to leave it the way it is, then just work your bind off and then a row of single crochet. If you are doing the, the buttonholes, you are going to need buttons and you're going to need the buttons that you want to use for this cardigan because you need to measure them. So the easiest way to measure them is to just line it up with the row of single crochets and count how many buttons, or not how many buttons, how many stitches across the button is. So that will help you determine how many stitches you will need to skip and how many stitches you are going to need to chain in order to have a buttonhole that fits the button. So this way you can use any size button you want and it's not going to be specific to any pattern. So you'll be free to use any size. All right, so let's line these up, pin them down to wherever it is that you want the buttonholes. So make sure you just kind of lay them flat and space them out the way you want them. And then you're going to place some stitch markers along the side of the cardigan so you know where to crochet your buttonholes. So the next thing to do is just to crochet this. So remember to work your bind off. So let me grab my hook and we'll work on the bind off together really quickly. So this is the same, just a single crochet bind off. And then we're going to work single crochets. Now something to keep in mind when you are crocheting the buttonholes is the number of stitches the button was across. So we just measured the button. In my case, the button was four stitches. So I'm going to count two stitches on either side of my stitch marker. And that's how wide I need the buttonhole to be. 
So once I've determined where I need to stop, I'm going to chain four. And I'm doing four because that's how wide, that's how many stitches wide my button was. So I'm going to chain four and then I'm going to skip three and insert my hook into the fourth stitch, crocheting a single crochet. So let me remove this stitch marker. And now I need to measure the buttonhole before I go any further. So I'm going to place the button here in the buttonhole and it should, it slipped out, it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't be too easy to pull the button through. So here I'll show you. You should be able to hold the button like this so that it's still easy to push the button in and out, but it's not too loose because otherwise your cardigan will pop open very easily. So if it is too loose, then remove a chain. If it is still too tight, then add a chain. You can also skip a or add an additional stitch. So instead of skipping three, I could have skipped four um, and added a chain, but you'll just have to adjust it so that it fits your button properly. Then you're going to single crochet in every stitch until you get to the next stitch marker. Again, I have to um, leave four stitches. So I've got two stitches on the left, two stitches on the right of my stitch marker. I'm going to chain four. I'm going to skip three and single crochet into the fourth stitch. And then I'm just going to measure the button again. Repeat this in every one of the buttonholes until you get to the uh, trim at the bottom of the sweater and then just single crochet across the bottom part of the trim. So your work should look like this once you finish. Now we're going to work a row of single crochet. So we're going to chain one. We're going to turn our, turn our work around. There we go. And then beginning on the very first stitch of the row, we're going to begin with our single crochets until we get to that buttonhole. So single crochet here, 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 and just continue until you get to the buttonhole. And at the buttonhole, we're going to crochet the same number of uh, stitches that you Skip, uh, that you chained. Sorry, that made that confusing. So I chained four stitches. So that means I need to crochet four single crochets into that chain space. So there's one, two, three, and then four, because that's the same number of chains that I crocheted. And then I'm going to single crochet in this next stitch right here, right next to the buttonhole, and continue to single crochet until I reach the next one. And then just repeat this in all of the buttonholes along the side of the car um, the side of the cardigan. I am having trouble speaking today. <laughs> but continue until you finish the row, and then you're going to do one row of single crochet right after that. If this bulks up too much, then just remove one of the stitches. So instead of crocheting four, I could have crocheted three. So this is all kind of trial and error. Try it out. See how you like it better. Once you get to the end of the row, you're going to chain one, turn your work around. And you're just going to work a row of single crochets. So you're going to single crochet one in each of the stitches along the top of the buttonholes. So this is going to give us a nice edge. So single crochet all the way across and then you're done. So beginning on the first stitch of the row, we're going to begin with one single crochet. And then just continue along. I'll finish these up, sew on the buttons, and then I'll see you again here in just a moment. So once you've got all the button situation taken care of, we're going to begin on the sleeve. Now, the sleeve is just a bunch of knit stitches, and we're going to be working with the vertical stitches that are the, it's the full vertical stitch. So let me move these stitch markers to show you. So right here, we have a half vertical stitch because it only has one leg or one loop. We need to find the stitch that has two loops or two legs, whatever you want to call them. That is where you're going to begin your row and where you are going to end it. So skip these little half vertical stitches. You're not going to use them. So beginning on that first full vertical stitch, we're going to insert our hook. Let's grab our yarn. We're going to leave a nice long tail because we can weave that in later. Pull your loop through your stitch. And then you are going to chain one. Now you can chain using both threads, you can chain using one thread, it doesn't really matter, it's just to secure the yarn. Once you've got your chain, you're going to begin to cast on a knit stitch in every stitch along the row. So all the way to the other side, right over on this side, to where you get to the last full vertical stitch. So it does become a little bit tricky um, 
because you're only able to cast on a certain amount of stitches before you run out of space on your hook and it becomes, well, I guess not run out of space on your hook, but it becomes really very difficult to cast them on. So I'll show you what I do here. I just need to cast on a few more stitches, but once you get to this point, see I'm nearly at the end of the sleeve. I cannot cast any more stitches on comfortably. Um, and this is going to happen for a few rows. We are going to work some decreases, so it does get a lot easier. But for the first several rows, you may have to do the same thing I'm doing here. So as you can see, I am trying to pull the fabric and it's too difficult to cast on. So I pull all my stitches onto my cord. So this is where it helps to have a corded hook. And you're going to cast on the remaining stitches onto your hook. So just pick them up right where you had them, right there. Make sure you tighten that first stitch, but let's cast these on. What is it? Two more left, I think. So I've got one and then two, and there is my row. Now for the return pass, it is a regular return pass, so we're back to the normal return pass here. Um, I'm going to work at these stitches that are here at the front of the hook first. So just yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until I have two loops left on my hook. So like this. And then I'm going to push my hook all the way out. And all of these stitches that I have on the cord, I'm just going to pull on the cord and pull them back onto my hook. So just like this. And then I continue the return pass. So back to yarn over, pull through two, until I'm left with just one loop on my hook. Once you complete the return pass, we're going to begin row number two, and row number two has a decrease. So skip the first vertical stitch, and you're going to do this for every row. We're going to decrease using the second and third vertical stitch. So cast on a Tunisian simple stitch, or insert your hook behind the top leg of the stitch, like so. You're going to go right into the next stitch, and you're going to knit stitch. So it looks like this. So Tunisian simple stitch and knit stitch. Yarn over and pull that through both of these stitches. So we're gonna pull it through the knit stitch, pull it through the simple stitch, and just cast on one loop. So you have the first loop of the, of the row, plus the one loop that you've just cast on using both of these two vertical stitches. Now we're gonna go into the fourth vertical stitch of the row and just cast on a knit stitch. So from here on out, the rest of the row, just cast on a knit stitch in every single one of the vertical stitches. And then you're gonna complete a regular return pass. Now moving on to row number three, we will need to decrease again. So this decrease is going to be at the end of the row. So we're going to begin with a knit stitch on that second vertical stitch of the row. So skip the first vertical stitch, cast on into the second. You're just going to cast on stitches until you are left with two vertical stitches at the end of the row, plus the final stitch. So it'll look like this. So here's the final stitch right over here. You're going to have two vertical stitches next to it. So final stitch, one, two. So it'll look like this. So knit stitch until you get to the last three little stitches, and then you're gonna decrease using the second to last, the two second to last stitches, and just knit stitch in the final stitch of the row. So I've knit through all of those stitches. Here I am at the end of the row. I've got these two vertical stitches. So we are going to Tunisian simple stitch in the first, knit stitch in the second, and then just cast on into the final stitch. So let's do that decrease again. So Tunisian simple stitch, go directly into the next vertical stitch and you're going to knit stitch. So right in here, insert your hook and knit stitch. Yarn over and pull through both of the vertical loops, or vertical stitches, sorry. So that we've cast on one loop. And now you can cast on into the final stitch of the row. Like so and pull that up and there you go and now you just complete your return pass now for the rest of the sleeve you are going to repeat those three rows so the first row is no decreases it's just one knit stitch per every vertical stitch of the row row number two is a decrease at the front of the row row number three is a decrease at the end of the row this is going to keep your decreases centered and your seam when you sew the bottom of the sleeve is going to be under the sleeve if you do all of your decreases on one side, it's going to start to twist your seam and you're going to be able to see it like spiraling up onto your sleeve. So that's why it's one at the beginning of the row, one at the end.
As you start to add length to your sleeve, it's going to start, it's going to be a flat fabric one, and it's going to start to come in on the side. So it's going to look like a bit of a trapezoid. And let me show you the other sleeve. So I've already completed one sleeve and I'll show you what that looks like. And it's already sewn and everything. So this is what the sleeve will look like once it's finished. The length of your sleeve, and this is as I have it on the measurement chart, does not account for the cuff. So you will have to determine how wide a cuff you want. So this is again up to you. I still use the one, one and a half, two inch, but you're going to measure the sleeve all the way across from the top of the cardigan. Remember to subtract that length at the end of the sleeve for the cuff. So whether it's one, one and a half, or two inches, whatever measurement you're using, subtract that from the total length of the sleeve. So continue working as many rows as you need, get that length, um, then you're going to work the cuff. The cuff is worked the same as the neckline and the trim. So you chain, foundation row, two row repeat, and then I will show you how to end that bind off because that was a little bit different. And then I'll show you how to sew the sleeve closed. So here's a look at what the fabric is gonna look like on the sleeve. So as you're adding length, it'll start to look like the fabric here on the photo. It's gonna start to taper down towards the wrist. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. So it's not a really wide wrist and it'll look like this once you fold the sleeve closed. So now that I've completed the sleeve and I've completed the cuff, I will show you how to work the bind off. So the bind off itself is the same. It is a single crochet bind off. So we're gonna close up these little stitches, but we're gonna do the, what, I guess two rows of single crochet so we don't have to hide so many tail ends. So beginning on this second vertical stitch of the row, we're just going to knit stitch and then when we, once we have our two loops, we're gonna yarn over, pull through two to single crochet. So there's the bind off part. You are gonna stop at the end of the trim. So let, or I guess it's not trim anymore, I guess it's the cuff. So I'm gonna work the bind off right here. I think I've got another stitch perhaps. And then once you finish with this, we're going to chain one. So here I'm at the end. Yep, this is the whole cuff, chain one, we're going to turn our work around and we are going to crochet a row of single crochets. So beginning on the first stitch right next to your hook, just single crochet one into every stitch. So what this is going to do is bring our thread all the way to the top of the sleeve. So right to the wrist so that we can start to sew the sleeve closed. Once you finish your last stitch, chain one, it's going to make a nice little knot here at the bottom. You're going to cut a long length of yarn. You're going to use this to sew your sleeve closed. So I'm gonna grab some scissors, cut this off, there we go. You're gonna pull your hook out and you're gonna pull the yarn along with it. Tighten up the knot here at the bottom. You are gonna need a yarn or a tapestry needle for this next section, but here's a look at how our sleeve looks so far. Once you get your needle threaded, you're gonna sew along the cuff. Now the cuff, it doesn't really matter what stitch you use. So it is very easy to hide the stitching for the cuff part itself. Now for the knit stitch part, we kind of want to work with N, as much of an invisible seam as we can. So it's going to be a little bit different for the stitch and I'll show you what stitch I normally use. Um, I think it's called like a, is it a Kitchener stitch? I'm not sure what it's called in knitting. I'm, I'm not a knitter, <laughs> but I did learn that through watching knitting tutorials. Um, so I'm trying to use a stitch that is very similar to that so that it's a pretty invisible seam. Well, once you get to the end of the cuff, we're going to stitch into the knit stitch part of the sleeve. So for the very, very first one, I wanna add a little bit more support to the stitch itself. So here, let me move these stitch markers real quick. All right, so I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. So the way I'm gonna hold my fabric is my two ends so that they lay right across from each other like this. I don't want them to overlap. I'm gonna stitch across. So first thing is I'm gonna go stitch all the way through to the opposite side of where my needle was. So there we go. And the stitches that we're gonna be using are these, right along the sides. So here's one side and this is what they look like on the other side. So that's where we're going to stitch. We are gonna begin on the opposite side of where our needle was just placed. So we're gonna insert the needle right here so that we end up at the top of the stitch and then just pull through. All right, so here's the stitch I'm gonna be using for the rest of the work. So wherever it was your yarn came out through, so that stitch right here, 
is where I'm going to insert my needle. So pay attention to which stitch the needle comes out, or not the needle, the yarn comes out through. So our yarn comes out through this stitch, so I'm going to insert my needle here and pop it up on the other side, so in the stitch right next to it. And I'm going to pull that through. And now I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to repeat. So here's the yarn, it came out through this stitch, so that is the stitch I'm going to insert my needle into and pop it out the other side, so into that next stitch, and then pull through. Go back to the bottom side of the, the fabric, and here's where my yarn came out, so that's where I'm going to insert my needle, pop it up on the other side, and then just pull. So I'm going to repeat this for a few stitches. Don't go too, too far. You are going to have to pull on your yarn. So I'm just going to give it a few more stitches and see this is what it's going to look like. You're just going to hold on to your fabric as you pull on your stitches and pull them nice and tight and then loosen it a little bit. I know it, it sounds kind of weird, <laughs> but if you pull on the stitches fairly tight and then loosen them up, you're going to have a nice, uh, a cleaner seam and you'll be able to loosen up the stitch however much you need in order for the sleeve to lay flat. So it'll make more sense as I work my way further along into the sleeve. I'll show you what I mean. And I'll show you what it looks like. So let me just finish this and I will be right back. So I finished stitching this sleeve and this is what it looks like. Now here's what I meant by pulling it really tight. So if you pull too tight on it, it's going to bunch up your sleeve. That's not a terrible thing to happen, but if it bunches up, all you do is just pull on the sleeve to stretch this out. So you want your sleeve to lay flat. So slowly pull on it and make it so that there's not too much tension in your stitching so that you're still going to be able to move your arm in the sleeve and it won't tear the stitching because once that tears, your entire sleeve will pop open. So go through, sew the rest of your sleeve, sew the stitches right here so that this isn't open and then make a knot and weave in your ends. And then your cardigan is finished. If you'd like to see the sizing charts, they are available on the blog. That is gonna be modebespoke.com. I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below. If you would like to see more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram and that's at mode.bespoke. But thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next tutorial.